So welcome to the first in what may become a regular series, may not, uh, in which I answer some questions that you guys have left in the YouTube comments. So it might be a bit of a long video, so I'm just going to get right into it. First question comes from Professional Bookworm. They say, at what age did you start running? I don't know, probably 9 or 10. Competitively running though, I started running in grade 9, so that's 14. Would it be the same for international students? Now, I'm going to assume that this is in reference to the whole Harvard acceptance thing. Yes, I am in fact an international student. I am a Canadian student. And so, uh, taking the SATs, my, my GPA, my grades, whatever, same thing. So, obviously, your grades are going to scale differently to the American GPA system, depending on where you are, but it's all pretty standard. How was the application essay? Honestly, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I really, really enjoyed uh, writing about something that I'm passionate about. I wrote about a failure in my life, and so I wrote about uh, when, I, when I failed to do well at science fair, and then I failed to do well at track that summer, and I made a series of really poor decisions. And so I wrote about that, and yeah, that was a fun essay to write. I, I enjoyed it. Okay, uh, question number two comes from Golden Cron Plays. Uh, they say, did you need to achieve a specific average to get into Harvard, or did they accept you based on your athletic performance? So, Harvard and other schools, they don't, they, the top schools, they don't tend to publish what your GPA minimum requ requirement is, or what your average minimum requirement is. Um, and the reason being is that there will always be exceptions. So, if you are like a super crazy world leader, blah blah blah, but you have a 3.0 GPA instead of a 4.0, they're still going to accept you, right? The idea is that they want to take people who have this potential to be world class. So in my case, even though I had the, the 4.0 GPA, whatever, they don't really care about that. What they do care about is, are you academically capable of graduating in four years? And if you are, then it's basically just a check mark. They say, sure, okay, now what else? What are their extracurriculars like? Blah, blah, blah. So in my case, my, my really strong extra, extracurricular was track. And so that really helped me, but I, I still had that academic checkbox that I had to go through. So next question, Suyog Joshi, uh, what's my typical routine for a run? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that this is going based on my easy runs. So for easy running, what I like to do, usually I don't do a warm up for easy runs um, because I just start off slow. Um, so usually I start off, I try to start off around five minute kilometers and then I gradually pick it up depending on how I'm feeling, sometimes down to four minute flat kilometers, sometimes a little faster, sometimes a little slower. Sometimes I keep it all the way at 440s for the whole run. And it all depends on how I'm feeling. A lot of running, a lot of easy running is just listening to your body, right? And, and listening to what you need at the time. Afterwards, I always recommend that people do core and people do some static stretching. Um, don't static stretch before you run. If you are feeling some tightness, do dynamic stretches. So do a dynamic warm up. Uh, if you're feeling if you're feeling some tightness or cross train, right? You don't always need to run. Uh, what kind of workouts do I usually do to prep for cross country? This question comes from Jeffrey DJ Lee. This is uh, there's a lot of workouts that I do. I think the biggest thing for cross country though is just to ramp up your easy mileage. The key is to not go straight to like 120 kilometers a week. The key is if you're at 60 now, hit 70 next week and then 80. There are different rules that different people follow based on percentage increase and so on to not get hurt. Really, it's just listening to your body is what I've found is most effective and pushing yourself, but not to the point of injury. Okay, next question comes from Greg Rempel. He says, are you required to write the SATs for grade 12 as well? No. Uh, if you write the SATs at any point and you're happy with your score, you don't need to write them again. May grade 11 was a sweet spot for me and it worked out well for me. So I definitely recommend May of grade 11 being, being a great um, write date. If you're on the ball, I think there's a March grade 11. That would also be really good. I just wasn't on the ball about it. Uh, next question, Victoria McMahon. Do I use Final Cut Pro? Yeah, I use Final Cut Pro to edit all my videos together. Uh, same person, Victoria McMahon says, please make another video to explain how you got in contact and how to prepare for SATs and more about applying, etc. Great contact. Thank you, Victoria. It's not really a question, but I'll definitely make a video uh, more specifically about the application process because it was confusing to me. I figured it out eventually, but it took a fair bit of research and I think it would be useful for people to have that resource out there. 
Okay, next question comes from Adam. Uh, hey John, I'm currently in grade 10 and finished 13th place for relay at Asa due to my ankle injury. Congrats. I couldn't advance in my main events, but now since it's somewhat better and I can start training, how often should I? I thought I'd ask because of your experience. Keep up the great vids. Thanks Adam for the kind words. Um, here's what I would say, listen to your body and start off slow, right? So that's the biggest thing for coming off an injury. The biggest mistake that I see people making is just not doing anything and then all of a sudden racing, right? And then they get a worse injury and they're back out for a few months again and it's just, it's terrible, right? So you need to listen to your body and if, if you have an ankle injury and you feel okay to do some easy running, do it, right? Do a little bit of easy running and then take time and say, okay, how am I feeling now after you easy run? And don't be afraid to, to do two steps forward, one step back, right? It's, you have a lot of time until next track season, assuming that's your priority. So take time to do things right and take time to, again, gradually ramp things up and just listen to your body. Uh, Zudi2 asks me, what drives me academically? And that's a good question. Um, so I'm not sure that anything necessarily drives me specifically academically. I've never, I've never really been somebody who is really driven by numbers. Like, oh, I really want to have the top average in the school or anything like that. That's never, that's never really been a priority for me. Uh, what has been a priority for me is just excellence in everything that I do, right? And so in terms of an academic drive, I think I wouldn't feel good about myself if I was doing really well at track, but not really well at school, right? I would feel incomplete. And so I want to do really well at everything that I can. And so if I'm going to be a world class or not world class, if I'm going to be a national class runner, then I want to be a national class scholar as well. And I think that's just how my brain functions. I just, I want to be at the same level as, as academically as I am athletically. And so that's, that's kind of why I push myself academically. Also, I think just to keep things in perspective, I think that, that running while it's my passion, it's not necessarily my career, right? And so when running is over for me after, after college or if I run post collegiately, it will eventually be over and I will have most of my life to live without competitive running. So how am I going to set myself up? to be the happiest I can possibly be later in life, academic success, I think is a big one. So yeah, that was, uh, that was a question and answer video. Hopefully it was insightful and helpful. Uh, if you have any more questions about Harvard, about running, about academics, about whatever, let me know. I'm, I'm open. I might be making these videos weekly or bi-weekly or however often I have enough questions to do them. So leave your questions down in the comments and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Stay tuned.